You are now watching Zach Lesage, the best place to learn about competitive Pokemon TCG. Let's get it. Yo, what's poppin' peeps? Welcome back to the channel, Zach Lesage here. It's another Monday and we are gonna be doing another top 10 best decks. We've had a little bit of movement when it comes to this list, but lists are getting a little bit more solidified. Which decks do you think are gonna make it in the top 10? Let me know what your guess is in the comments below. Even if you only wanna guess the top five, that's cool. I get back to every single person's comments. Uh, I don't know how many other Poketubers get to do that. I, I honestly don't have a chance to check it out, but I do get back to every single person's comments, so definitely do that. Also, while you're at it, give this video a thumbs up. It does really help boost the algorithm and get us closer to our goal of getting the 10K subs. That being said, if you haven't subbed already, subscribe to the channel. We are over 9,000 subs. We only have about 800 subs left to go at the time of creation of this video, so we can definitely do it. Let's make it happen before the end of February. I know if we all band together and find a neighbor, brother, sister, mom, someone new at our local league store, let them know about the channel. It does really help things grow, and it's the freest way to make sure that this, uh, that the channel gets a 10K, and that just means like more content, better production, all that good stuff, everything that I possibly can do. Um, let's jump into our number 10 spot, see exactly what's going on. Splashing all the way into number 10 and dropping from number 9 last week is Inteleon VMAX. We saw this deck spike up after Gato was able to win a late, late night event on Friday before the Pokemon uh, late night regionals that I ran. And the deck's kind of taken off a little bit since. We saw that uh, Gabe Shumway played a similar deck in the top 16 of the late night series last week. Are we going to see this deck continue to see success? Well, what does this deck do? This deck's all about attaching a Rapid Strike energy to your Inteleon VMAX and continuously lifting it back using Cheryl, attacking for 140, 140, 140. And this deck is built to kind of do that for as long as you can get set up. I mean, you got Path to the Peak to slow your opponent down. The deck's generally a solid deck. I think due to time constraints in our best of one format, this deck could very well slip out of the top 10 as there's a lot of interesting decks that are in kind of the top 20. We saw Galarian Surfetch really pop up, win, win the underground. Um, that one, no surprise, I'm gonna throw it out there. It is gonna make the top 20. Stay tuned for that one tomorrow. I do the top 11 through 20 every single Tuesday at 12, and I do these top 10s every single Monday at 12. Eastern time zone, so hopefully y'all can check that one out. But I do think this one's gonna probably slip off into the top 20 this week and maybe like fall off. I don't know, maybe it will make top 10 again. It has some stability, but it's slowly slipping. And when a deck slowly slips from nine to 10 here, it's probably gonna slip to 11, 12, 15, 17, stuff like that. 180 CP ain't bad though. And it really is starting to see some success. So maybe, maybe it will just be like our de facto 10th place deck now. I do want to let you know that all of the lists are available with reference videos in the pinned comment below. Check that out as well. If you're also trying to pick up any of the cards for these decks, you can go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5. You can find that discount code in the description, along with a bunch of other stuff like the Discord, how to sign up for the late night series events, all that great stuff. And if you ever have any questions, feel free to DM me on Discord, Twitter. Let me know in the comments below. I try to do everything I possibly can for the community. So stay tuned for all of that. Sliding to number nine and galloping all the way from number 13 last week is Ice Rider Calyrex VMAX. I hope all y'all appreciate these little puns that I throw in there because I tried to think extra hard of them to get everyone's Monday or wherever else in the world moving for you so you're ready for all this information. Ice Rider Calyrex is a deck that's kind of been in this uh, mid-range spot and I do want to let people know that I think decks that are kind of in that 7, 8, 9, and like 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I think all of those are kind of interchangeable. These are all the decks that kind of uh, mix. And that's really where our format's going. So you'll have some that kind of pop up out of nowhere. Uh, like last week, we saw the Galarian Surfetch deck pop up and we saw some other counter box uh, kind of uh, variations. But that's really what allows the metagame to kind of shuffle things in. So as they're rotating in, that's really the spots that they're trying to rotate in through. I think Ice Rider people are just starting to pick it back up. They're getting ready for Brilliant Stars. This deck gets a lot when it comes to Choice Belt and stuff like that. So that might spark some interest. I also think this deck does quite well against Suicune decks and Single Strike decks. And with Suicune being the base for most counterbox decks, I think this deck can generally do well. We probably will see this deck within the top 10 again, but that's just my simple guess. It's all about using Ride of the High King and Max Lance at the correct time. You probably want to go Ride of the High King first, then Max Lance, but if you are going to get the OHKO with Max Lance, maybe with some quick shooting, Inteleon action that we see in a lot of decks, or 
grabbing those correct cards with shady dealings, uh, which we see in a lot of these decks. I mean, Inteleon's no stranger to the top 10 decks or top 20 decks. And that's really where the Ice Rider Calyrax is at. Of course, you have Path and Marty and all that good stuff and Melanie to get this deck set up. Where do we think this deck's going to land? I'm not entirely sure. But like I said, I think it's probably going to be similarly placed as it is this week going forward. And if anything, this deck's going to get better with Brilliant Stars. So stay tuned for that. I think this is a great choice right now. It's kind of a middle of the road. But uh, as long as you avoid Zacian, you should be pretty good. Creeping into number eight and previously number eight before, and I also think the week before that as well. If anyone uh, knows that fact, let me know in the comments below. How many weeks has E turn been number eight? Either way, eight must be the lucky number because this deck seems to be uh, just chilling here. It's good. Maybe it's probably solidified. And we find a lot of that with the Fusion Strike metagame where you'll have a group of decks that will solidify a large portion of a certain percentage of decks and kind of just see success. Um, this is my current take on the deck. I like Weezing and I like Umbreon and I like Moltres. We saw this deck make top eight at the most recent late night event. Uh, we had Keenan, a local player to my area, at least in the greater Toronto greater Toronto plus area, seeing success with Eternatus VMAX. It's great to see this deck seeing success because it's always been a deck that I have kind of a soft spot in my heart. Like I really have saw a lot of success with the deck. I really like this deck and it's really easy to play for the majority. You're able to go Eternal Zone, you have a large bench and we can do 30 damage for each Pokemon that you have on there. That does allow us to have opportunities to have a bunch of cool cards like extra copies of Crobat V and Galarian Weezing in some cases, some other cases we've seen. I don't even know what other cases we've seen. We've seen Quillfish, Single Strike and uh, Tower of Darkness. We've seen Umbreon, we've seen Moltres, Sableye V. There are a lot of really cool cards when it comes to this deck, and I like the, the balance between the Weezing, the Umbreon, and the Moltres. This is the type of deck that I think gets a lot better when Brilliant Stars comes out. Right now, it's seeing success because if you're playing against a Mew Max deck, they cannot knock you out with four power tablets. They're doing 210 uh, with Technoblast plus four power tablets, that's 330. Sure, they can hit you with four Fusion Strike, Energy, Meletius, Echo, and two power tablets, but your chances are much higher than most other dark decks to survive an attack. And you're pretty much an all dark deck, so you should do well against Mew Max, which has largely been the best deck in our Fusion Strike format. No leaks, no surprises, but Mew is probably on this list. I do want to point that out there. So keep that in mind as we continuously grow. Um, I think that this deck is going to stay within our top 10 because it's stayed there enough. Just as like a really strong dark deck in our format. Bringing it at number 7, and jumping all the way from number 15, a gigantic leap is Gengar VMAX. Now, Gengar VMAX is a deck that I've uh, largely loved. It's a deck that I'm kind of, uh, if there's a deck in the format that would be my pet deck, Gengar VMAX is my pet deck. And if you want to know what pet deck means, it means it's a deck that, no matter what, I love this deck. It's my own personal little side project at all times. I could play Mew VMAX with the best of them. Gengar VMAX is always on my mind. It's, uh, <laughs> what are boys thinking about? Gengar VMAX if you're Zach Lesage. Gengar VMAX is all about having your opponent with uh, V Pokemon in play, and that's V, V Max, V Star, V Union, whatever you got chilling on your bench, you're hitting hard with uh, Gengar VMAX's attack for two energies. You could build that up with Houndoom, but I think this is a deck that just uses less than a normal single strike deck. Single strikes typically using three energies to attack with their Umbreon V or their single strike Urshifu V. You're using two energies with a Gengar V to knock out single prize card Pokemon, or you could evolve into a Gengar V Max and hit for less against a Mew V Max. So like if you're playing Umbreon V Max against Mew V Max, you need three energies. But with Gengar V Max, you only need two. Do you see how there's like an improvement there? I also think that it's G Max swallow up attack doing 250 with upwards of four single strike hitting for 330, hitting for 310, like it can do a lot of damage with that card. And I thought about it and I was like, how does this deck lose? Like, let's go through the matchup breakdown. Mew VMAX is largely on top of the format. This deck's dark, you should be good. Okay, cool. Jolteon VMAX, well, we could tech in a single strike Urshvu V. That should be pretty good to beat uh, a Jolteon because they can't two shot you or they can't uh, one shot you. So you two shot them or they two shot you and you just attack them, knock out, attack them, knock out. And of course, Gengar VMAX can hold its own. So you don't always need it, but it's a cool tech. Then we look down at like the other decks and it's like, okay, Galarian Weezing, not a great matchup or the Hoopa Maltris, whatever deck you want to call it. 
Sure, that's cool. Every deck kind of loses to something. But Duraludon wasn't a great match. And I was like, well, that's because they have Skyscraper and you're literally all only playing special energies. Well, with Path to the Peak, you can kind of get past that. And against Zacian, you can kind of get past that. And then people are like, well, Single Strike beats you because you're weak to fighting. And I'm like, well, no, if you attack with Gengar V um, or your Single Strike Urshfu V, you're still doing two prize cards against two prize cards. And at the very end, when you want to attack with a VMAX to get those prize cards, you can actually attack with Gengar VMAX for two energies, or you can actually knock their VMAX out because your VMAX can actually get an Oko for three energies. So I think that this deck is favored against most decks in the format and largely should see a little bit more success. I'm going to put Gengar again as a top five deck. Um, I know it's number seven here, and that's because my numbers are based off of the results of events. I personally won a tournament with this uh, list. It was only 30 players, played the next day, and then I was like, cool, you want to know what? I was able to go ahead and make top 10. It was a single elimination when it was in the top 16, whatever. Stuff happens. Overall, Gengar VMAX has seen a lot of success this past week. I'm not necessarily saying it's due to me, but I do think this list is very good with four Path to the Peak. It looks a little bit weird at first, but once you're able to get past how weird it looks, I think this deck's absolutely fire, and I think it even gets better with uh, Brilliant Stars. So I'm probably going to be covering this deck with a deck profile and an early deck profile when it comes to Brilliant Stars coming out. So stay tuned for both of those. Gengar VMAX is absolutely my favorite deck in format right now. Um, is number seven just due to placements, but that could change if more people play this deck. If you are looking for a really cool play for the late night series event tonight, play this deck. Single striking it up at number six and falling from number five last week. Not a really big fall, kind of uh, like what I said, most of the decks within the top, uh, maybe seven, eight decks are gonna be within each other and keep on like interchanging there. It's the same thing as the decks that are like, eight nine ten to fifteen that can interchange there i think majority of our top 10 decks are pretty solidified at this point we're pretty deep in the fusion strike meta game and here's where we have single strike we just went over single strike gengar this deck's all about using single strike roar powering up your umbreon v or your single strike urshu v dark type attackers against dark weak decks and you have fighting type attackers against fighting weak decks of course single strike urshu v max can go through anything and umbreon v max can bring up whatever you want and it's a generally strong attacker I think this is a pretty solid build, very similar to what Gabe Smart was able to make top 32 with at the late night regionals. And I, I think single strikes just like, okay. At some points, I think that Gengar should overshine this deck. It's literally the difference of 10 CP. So we'll see how that ends up going. But if you are like a rapid strike Urshvu Moltres player, I think that you should probably switch to this deck or Gengar. Because again, the dark fighting combination of single strike is much more powerful than the rapid strike op options that we have right now. So. I think this is the type of deck that might see a little bit less play because it's not really doing anything in the metagame. It's also not doing nothing. It's like, it's neutral almost in a way where it's like, you're not losing very much. You're also not winning very much. I don't know if you want to play Pokemon on, on um, easy mode or if you want to play it on hard mode, right? And I think Single Strike might be playing it on hard mode because if you're neutral, you're neutral against everything. That means you have to fight for every single matchup. But if you play Mew VMAX, you can just kind of bop a lot of decks for free because you're just playing... Mew VMAX or Gengar just beats Mew because it's just dark type. I think this deck doesn't necessarily just beat Mew anymore. So keep that in mind as you kind of uh, play around with this deck. Slicing that sword all the way in number five, this deck has jumped up for number seven. And I'm sure that somewhere in the world, Joshua Sutherland or Epo Christian are smiling. Uh, it's one of those things where we've seen this deck see kind of a drop in the utmost success and i guess that's like a weird way to bring it so like let me let me start off with the strategy in case anyone wants to know about it use intrepid sword you rip energies you go ahead and attack with brave blade you also got zamazenta v against v max decks and sometimes that's enough and we have crushing hammers and that's cool and metal sauce you can build up energies that's the deck you you got what you get if you're new to the game or if you're looking for a relatively easy deck to play or a relatively budget cheap deck to build in real life or online Turbo Zacian's a great choice. I do want to put that out there. Now, the reason why this deck is seeing a lot of success, it's getting a lot of players, those top 16 results, those top 32 results at the late night series and bigger events like the Underground or Liam Kidd or whatever. These, This is the type of deck that's going to kind of get you there. It's not going to get you the whole way there all the time. It does pretty well in some small events here and there. But Josh Sutherland himself has been kind of been playing with some other decks, maybe been playing too much Zacian, maybe just exploring or growing as a player. At the end of the day, Zacian is seeing success in different ways. Before it was Josh taking down gigantic 100-person tournaments, 
and uh, Christian was doing the exact same thing, but now it just seems like those events are keep on getting, they keep on being won by Mew um, or Jolteon or other decks. So I think Zacian might take a step back from some of the players who have definitely been uh, piloting it to its excellent and building this core of a deck that's amazing. I think in other cases, this deck is bringing a lot of players into the game and giving them their top 16s, their top 32s. So it's definitely a consistent deck to get you those results, but it might not be the first place that you're looking for. And that's totally fine. That's no shade. And I think those are amazing placements. If you tell me I could top 16 out of regionals with a deck, I would definitely go for it. You know what I'm saying? So it, it comes to the point where depends on what you're looking for as a deck. I think this deck is a really good deck to take you decently far in a tournament. Might take you the whole way, but likely it won't. That's kind of my thoughts on it right now. Coughing up gas at number four and dropping from number three is Galarian Weezing, Galarian Maltris, Sableye V, Hoopa. I'm just going to call the sec Sableye V for the sake of the video, but I do want to let you all know that there are variants of the sec that don't play Galarian Weezing. They do play more Hoopas. They do play this. They do play Tapu Koko, no cast form, whatever. The goal of this deck is to really sacrifice prize cards, whether it's Sobbles, Galarian Weezing, or even Hoopa early game using cast form as a pivot to then build up and build up your opponent drawing prize cards. So you could swoop down with Malevolent Charge, attach a couple energies to Moltres, attach another energy, Fiery Wrath for a decent bit of damage, or build up damage on your opponent's Pokemon with Sableye V um, and attack with Crazy Claws. Or not with Sableye V, but for Sableye V and attack with Crazy Claws. You know what I'm saying? You can use Claire to get things back, Raihan to accelerate energies. This deck has largely seen success. And I mean, I think it's definitely a top five deck. I think players are just adding an Oracorio and new players are evolving around this deck and Jolteon is still a very popular deck. So when it does come down to this deck, I think that players are definitely finding their way around it. The deck's not new anymore. People, people know what's going on. This is definitely my go-to build. It is in the description. You can copy paste that right into PTCGO or PTCG Live whenever it comes out. If you're looking to pick up any of the cards for this deck, you can go to ptcgostore.com, plug in code ZLASSAGE5, pick up some packs, open them, or trade them for the cards that you're looking for on PTCGO. And I think this is a solid play for the foreseeable future, getting better in Brilliant Stars. Definitely think this deck's going to stay within the top five until we get Brilliant Stars. So if you are looking for a new deck or a deck that's new to you, Definitely try this one out. Absolutely towering over the rest of the competition at number three is Duraludon VMAX. Lots of people like to make jokes about how this Pokemon looks. Duraludon VMAX to me looks like it's part Dragon Half Hotel. I know that uh, Cal Connor, a player who's largely put in a lot of effort for this list, literally calls it the PS5 Dragon, right? It's definitely a Pokemon that looks like a gigantic meme, but Skyscraper is no meme when your opponent has special energies attached. So this deck moved from number four to number three. It's seeing a lot more play, and it's because I think Vaughn, O'Brien, and Cal Connor from the Shuffle Squad. Check out the Shuffle Squad, by the way. I create content there, too. They have a YouTube channel, a Twitter. Um, if y'all could just go ahead and sub to the Shuffle Squad and make our lives easier. We're trying to get to a 1,000 subs, and it'd be absolutely amazing. I post at least weekly content there, so by all means, check that out. Anyways, Duraludon on VMAX, cracked. Your opponent has special energies. That's cool. They can't attack you. They might play Path to the Peak while well, you play Crystal Cave. If they play basic energies, you use Crushing Hammer. So this deck's like a mid-range attacking control deck, and I think this is where, like, where Turbo Zacian lets off with the Zamazenta V. This deck kind of uh, works really well, and I think the extra healing with Pokemon Center Lady and Team Yell Towel, both Cal and Vaughn were able to go top 16, and Cal went top 8 at the late night series that we saw. Vaughn just came second place at the Sunday Open with this Duraludon deck again, so I really think this is just the way to play Duraludon. Code's been cracked, the deck's br broken, Give this deck a try. It's not a meme. It's definitely very good. And it's been seeing a lot of success. So if you're looking for a deck to kind of beat Mew and a few other decks, this is a really great choice. Zapping its way all the way to number two. And number two for like literally the last two months, it feels. Jolteon VMAX has largely been the second most successful deck in format for the foreseeable past. Like I And I think it's going to be for the foreseeable future. At least until we get Brilliant Stars and Manaphy creates that ripple effect of does Jolteon do well, or is Bench Barrier an issue we should really worry about? This deck's all about Max Thunder Rumbling, 100 damage to the active, 100 damage to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon, as long as they have a damage counter, but you have access to that with Zigzagoon, Scoop of Nets, and Quick Shooting. 
This deck with Path of the Peak and Marnie and some other control elements allows you to really see a lot of success, and this deck can largely hold its own against most decks in the format, really only losing to fighting decks, and even then you have kind of a, a fighting chance against those decks. So. I don't know how to really put it like I think Jolteon VMAX if it saw more play it'd be really up there with Mew if you look at the CP total it's very like similar every single week if not growing every single week in popularity and we've seen a lot of players seeing success such as the Shuffle Squad's very own Lindsay uh, Rosecuff who's been playing this deck well and was able to win a major event with it as well online so it's really one of those things where Jolteon VMAX busted deck I think it's going to do well. It always does well. It's number two. So if you're not really into the number one deck, which we'll get into one second, again, no leaks, although I know a lot of y'all, let me know your guesses for the number one deck in the comments. You might just happen to get it right, and there might just happen to be a prize someday, or no prize at all. But either way, it is one of those things where Jolteon VMAX is a busted deck. I really like this deck a lot. Escape Rope, I didn't necessarily explain it last week, and a lot of people asked me in the comments to explain it more. It's a deck that, I, a card that I've seen in Lindsay's list. Escape Rope allows you to get around Gallery and Weezing, so you can stop neutralizing gas from stopping your abilities, so you're able to use Shady Dealings for a turn, and play a Supporter. Not necessarily the greatest uh, card, like, it's, you have to be in top deck mode, but it also allows you to play around with Max Thunder Rumble, and kind of works as like a third boss. So a really cool tech overall. Um, if you need any more, like, things, if I never necessarily explain everything, or you think I could explain a little bit more, I do have reference video in the pinned comment for most of these decks, so you can see these decks played in live action, or you can always ask me in the comments below. Popping into number one, and uh, Psychic Leaping all the way every single week, number one for like the past two months, this deck and Jolteon have been number one and number two, Mu V Max. Now Mu V Max has Cross Fusion Strike, you can copy your Fusion Strike Pokemon's attacks, you got Meloetta, that you can copy with Melodious Echo if you have a bunch of Fusion Strike energies in play. You have access to Technoblast, Technoblast 2 in 210. Psychic Leap, if you have damage on yourself and you want to kind of recover that Mew by putting it back into your deck. This, has, this deck also draws a lot of cards with Genesex, Fusion Strike System. You have ways to bring things up, draw extra cards, attach extra energies, search for whatever you want, get energies back. Like, this deck has pretty much everything. For me, this is the ideal build. I think it's seen a lot of success. Very similar builds have got, kind of done well, but this has an answer against everything. So while there are builds that might be like, you wanna know what I'm gonna cut down on a Psychic Energy because I don't really care about Duraludon, this deck has answers to Duraludon, Galarian Weezing with the Oracorio. The Oracorio reduces the damage done to your Meloetta so that their Hoopas does not necessarily knock you out. It does help you out a lot when it comes down to these things of just not getting knocked out um, in general. So Oracorio working well against Jolteon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is the build of Mew VMAX. I really like how this deck plays out. A lot of other decks are acceptable with Mew VMAX. We see Switching Cups in the deck. We'll see Peony in the deck. We'll see a bunch of techs. Mew VMAX is really a deck that you can make it for yourself. This is really the way that I like playing the deck. The deck's probably gonna be number one for the foreseeable future. Still gains cards from Billion Stars. And even though the rest of the top 10 decks counter this deck, this deck still continuously sees success. So keep that in mind when it comes to uh, testing this deck out, that Mew VMAX is absolutely broken. You can attack with Meloetta as early as turn one, knocking out Vs, all that great stuff. I don't really need to sell Mew VMAX. I think it's gonna be number one for the foreseeable future, next week, the week after that, whatever. Maybe we'll see if Gengar VMAX picks up steam, that deck absolutely bops Mew. So maybe that will make Mew go down a little bit and maybe Jolteon will take the crown. It is possible for Jolteon to take the crown. Let me know if you think it's possible in the comments, but uh, that's what we got going on for our decks today. And that's what we got going on for this video today, this week. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for an action-packed week of, po of Pokemon content. Just content in general, Pokemon content, all that great stuff. Um, still on double uploads, getting ready for Brilliant Stars. I might be doing a Legends of Arceus stream going on this Friday when the game comes out. So stay tuned for everything going on. Um, and like I said, always give it a video a thumbs up. Really helps boost it a lot. Um, even if you weren't like, whatever, give the video a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Uh, subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments what you want to see content-wise, anything like that. Just say hi. I like to say hi back. I like to get to know people. Join the Discord as well. And if you are playing the Late Night Series tonight, best of luck in that event too. Really uh, love seeing all the familiar faces, seeing success. I'll catch up with all y'all later on for another upload today. Peace out and have a great one. I truly appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means the world to me. And my goal with this channel is to spread my love of the game 
and knowledge with our entire Pokemon TCG community. If you haven't already, help Signal Boost this video to other Pokemon TCG fans by liking it, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to the channel. Hopefully we reach our goals really soon. Check out this recommended video and have yourself a great day. Thanks.